Hello, my name is Marina Case from the Red Shutters, a full-service decorating, design, and antiques company located in Warwick, New York, on Railroad Avenue, just across from the train station. Warwick is about an hour north of New York City. We serve our clients every day to help them introduce style, taste, and make great decisions. We are here today on The Style Show, a show about decorating, fashion, and fun. We welcome you, and please encourage your friends to listen. They can log in from anywhere in the world to www.wtbq.com or call in at 845-651-1110. Today, we are going to be speaking with Jennifer Powell from Kravit about Kravit Fabrics, and I'm also here with my co-host, Jude Hammerly. Thank you. Uh, I want to remind everybody to uh, try to sneak in a, a, a visit to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Costume Institute, which um, is going to soon be coming to a close. There, is, uh, there are a few weeks left. It closes August 15th, and that is the um, Punk Chaos to Couture, Couture Show, which is a great show, um, well done, lots of interesting things to see, and uh, certainly not the, the Costume Institute's typical show. So I encourage you to attend that. It's, it's really great. Um, also, want to remind everybody that I will be hosting a, a, a series of workshops at the Tuxedo Park Library, and those will be on September 12th, October 10th, and November 14th, including Your Home is the Story of Your Life. If you would like to sign up for those, you can easily do that by logging onto our website, www.theredshutters.com, and sign up for our email, and then you will receive notices of those. Um, also, we encourage you to like us on Facebook. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Are you there? Yeah, thanks very much for having me. We're delighted to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And, My um, pleasure. Yeah, we would love to talk to you um, and more about how did Kravitz start? I know they have um, progressed into a, uh, into a deep history and wonderful um, company. And just t tell us a little bit and our listeners about how Kravitz got started. Sure, it's actually a great story. Kravitz, over a century ago, Samuel Kravitz was a tailor. He emigrated from Russia to the United States. He worked on the Lower East Side as a tailor. He worked with very high-end clientele, obviously working very closely with fabrics and textiles and things like that. You know, he had an opportunity to take on some trimmings and have them in his shop and very quickly realized that that was, that was the growth area, that was the business that he was going to um, really be able to carry forward. And five generations of, of Kravit leadership later, the company has grown and grown and grown in the home industry. We have more than 40 showrooms in the U.S. and Canada, Mexico, Paris, London. We're growing in all product categories, fabric, furniture, trimmings, carpet. So we, we started small, but we've never looked back. That's great. I want to remind our listeners that um, at the Red Shutters, we very much like to tell your story, which includes um, introducing our formula, which is tribal, traditional, modern, and fun. And Kravit really has all of those things and a, and a tremendous selection. Uh, I was just in the New York showroom on Monday, and um, and just I'm always amazed when I walk in there about you know, what I see in all the great, um, and the great things they're introducing, they're, they're really good at keeping up their showroom, um, on trend. And, um, I know that, uh, you have acquired also s several companies in the last several years, which have added to your brand. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. We, um, several decades ago, we acquired a company called Lee Jofa. This is a historic English brand really known for, incredible florals, tartan plaids, and things. And what, what the Lee Jofa brand has done over the last couple of decades has not only made those, continue to improve upon those, there are, there are things that have been in those, um, that have been current in our line for, for decades, but also really introduced a different customer to the Lee Jofa brand. We have licensors like Kelly Wurstler, Oscar de la Renta, Aaron Lauder, Thomas O'Brien, they all bring a really different and unique point of view to to that brand, which, again, is rooted in historical English textiles, but is really an, a high-quality, modern um, fabric house today. And in 2011, we acquired Brunswick, Brunswick Assis, which um, was a great lesson for all of us in pronunciation. But um, <laughs> if, if you ask me, We're all still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's a, it's a great, great brand. Um, founded more than a century ago in France, and many of the fabrics, again, just like Lee Jofa, have never been out of the line, have always been in production. They're known for really classic 
not even classic, just over-the-top, bold, colorful French design, a lot of incredible toiles. There are floral chinoiserie, um, really, really beautiful, intricate, high-quality um, patterns, and the, the opportunity to, to bring Brunswick into the mix was, um, has been great for us. And we really, you know, we, we think less about what it will do for the Kravit brand and more about what it will do for our customers. Obviously, as you said, you know, we are committed to customer service first, but also making sure that we're offering a huge variety of products, incredible quality, and really making sure that we can give the designer everything that they need for their projects. Right, so you really um, have a well-rounded offering. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, the um, English tradition, um, and really, you know, it goes back to the idea of the Grand Tour and being able to incorporate things from your travels around the world. The English are really brilliant at this, and uh, and Lee Joffa is an incredibly um, high-quality fabric house and yeah. very good at, you know, it's a great source for me to be able to provide my customers with that with that look, you know, an, an, an international look. Um, so we, I love Lee Joffa and Brunchwig, and... Um, we are using Brunchwig um, just uh, at, at, on a project right now at Liberty Hall Museum, where we're restoring the dining room, which is the first home um, of the first governor of New Jersey, uh, William Livingston. And in the dining room, there was originally horsehair on the chairs. We are now going to, going to switch to a Brunchwig um, uh, beautiful royal blue look. It looks like horse hair, I would say, and, and incredible quality fabric that we're going to put on the chair. So we're very excited about that. Sounds sounds great. Yeah. So that's all happening, okay. and um, so you've you've got Lee Jaffa and Brunchwig, and um, tell us what is uh, what what is popular. What are you seeing as trends today? Okay. You know, as you really are leaders in the industry, and um, would love to hear more about what you're seeing. Sure. Well, I think it's an interesting question. First, I'd like to say that I'm not a designer and I'm not in product development, so my perception of trends is 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 mine alone. But I, you know, what what our product designers are thinking about is is months and sometimes years ahead of what's actually in the marketplace. But I think the trend question is an interesting one because. When you're talking about someone's home, there are a lot of designers, and not, e not even always designers, their clients who are saying, what's the trend? Okay, well, then give me something else. You know, you want to be able to live with it for a long time. You want to be able to look at it every day and have it make you happy. So if I were to say, you know, the trend is, is this color or this style, what we actually see and what we want people to do is make decisions that are more personal and make sure that if it's, a, if it's a color or if it's a pattern, it's something that they love and they can live with rather than just, I saw this in El Decor and, you know, so I have to have it, which, which of course is great too because that's how people can zero in on their style. But I think um, to answer your question, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be evasive at all, we are seeing a lot of neutral upholstery on the major pieces in the room. Um, chairs, sofas, and, you know, a gray or, or an easy neutral, and then introducing pops of color through accessories, through curtains, pillows, accents, things like that. Um, we're seeing a lot of indoor-outdoor fabric being used indoors. You know, people really want their homes to be livable, and they want every room to be inviting. And if the dog jumps up on the sofa or the kids spill cereal, then it's no big deal. It's easy to clean. The furniture is going to last a long time. Um, Another thing that we're seeing, obviously, ethnic is still a big trend with regards to pattern, iCat, Suzani, flat weave carpets. A lot of the florals, obviously, you know, you know from Lee Jofa, they do some of the best florals around, but what they're really doing is they're increasing the scale, they're paring down the color palette and really making it a really modern, bold statement. So um, we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of that reinterpreting really classic designs. And I keep saying this, and I know it's going to happen. I think Chintz is coming back. Wallpaper's definitely back. <laughs> in a big way. So. Wallpaper's back yeah. in a huge we're, we're way. Yes. Everything. Yeah. It's, it's, a great, it's a great time in design. I think customers are more educated than ever. Designers are more empowered than ever. There are more resources than ever. So it's a really exciting time. It is an exciting time. And um, it's interesting yeah. that you say, you know, I do a workshop called Trend or Fad, Smart Decorating Choices. Uh, and That's great, yeah. 
Well, you know, we talk about uh, how, you know, I, I, I really encourage clients to do their homes in a, you know, in a very timeless way, but then introduce some fun trends that maybe don't cost as much. So what you're saying sure. about, you know, introducing very neutral um fabrics on the large pieces that keeps it very timeless very long term and then they can pop in pillows and lamps and fun things so um absolutely it's less of a commitment and i think i actually heard a designer say that you know telling in his experience telling a client oh you're going to have this forever is is terrifying you know they want to be able to make changes <laughs> and be able to go in you know five years later and you know, check the throw pillows, bring in something new, and, you know, that's kind of, our homes will evolve just like we do, so, you know, we want to make that easy. Exactly, and you want to keep them fresh and updated, and, uh, right, so that's it. As I'm listening, Jennifer, you make a very, I think, clear distinction between your customers and consumers. In other words, Kravitz customers are, by and large, um, members of the trade, the decorating trade, I would, I would assume the furniture trade and other trades. What is the mechanism by which consumers can come in contact with Kravitz and make themselves more knowledgeable? Well, we sell our products exclusively to interior designers, which means that for the end user, for someone who sees us in a magazine or sees our advertisement, and maybe they come into our showroom or maybe they find us on the web, um, we do encourage them to get in touch with an interior designer in order to make that purchase. And the reason for that is, you know, when you sell fabric by the yard, there is there is an additional experience level that you need to have to know what to do with it. And for me personally, I'm not a designer. When I started working at Kravit, my friends said, oh, you're so lucky. You know, I bet you get all this free fabric. And I thought, well, what would I do with it? You know, I, what would I do with 10 yards of You'll fabric? You'll write a story. A they know. Yeah, you right, do you're producing a, a beautiful... You can do a chair. You can right. do... Exactly. So I think um, it is important for for the end user, for that end customer, to engage with an interior designer. And you can do that at any level. You don't have to redo your entire home. There are designers who will help you pick out a sofa or will help you get something reupholstered or, you know, or just work with you at different levels. But for, for what we do in our business, our customer is the interior designer, and then their customers are ultimately, that's where our fabric is going to land, but that's, um, that's where, who we think of as our primary customers. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, I mean, let's say consumers have heard about Kravit. Is there a Facebook page they can join? Is there a, a website they can go to? Um, let's just say we have a consumer audience and they may want to learn more about Kravit Fabrics. What, what mechanism would they have to do that um, on their own to make them a more educated customer for the interior designer? Absolutely. That's a great question. We have... We're, we're very active on social media. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter account. We're on Pinterest. We use Instagram. Our Instagram is Kravit Inc. Our Pinterest is Kravit. And the, both of those represent all three brands. We have separate um, Facebook pages and Twitter pages for all three of our brands. And we really try to – we promote our products. We talk about what's going on with us. We promote designers who are using our products, um, educational things that we run across on the web, you know, how to select the best upholstery, how to know if you're, you know, you should re recover your furniture frame, you know, you're at the thrift store or whatever. Um, there are a lot of really, really great ways to, to, to get educated, and we do try to have a presence on all of those platforms. And I know for me, because I do manage the social media for Kravit, that that is where a lot of the, a lot of end users will will find our brand and reach out to us, and we get a lot of inquiries on Facebook. You know, here's a photo of my grandmother's chair. She said it was Brunswick. Can you tell me what the pattern is? And, and we love to get inquiries like that because chances are, especially with Brunswick, it probably is still on the line, and we can still get it for them, and we can refer them to a designer in their area, and they can, you know, do a matching chair. They can get it recovered if it's, you know, if it's worn through the years. So we definitely encourage people to reach out to us and, and, and find us that way. You also have the terrific curator at Brunswick. I don't know if she's still there. I worked with her in Liberty Hall Museum. She was amazing. Um, but, yeah, uh, the Brunswick, our, our archive in Brunswick is incredibly, it's incredible. incredibly comprehensive. And we have had so much fun as a company just getting our hands on it and going through some incredible, really, really beautiful documents. And 
because Brunswick is such an incredible company, there are a lot of the people that um, have been with the company for a long time are so knowledgeable and can recognize patterns on site, and it's it's really great. Right, and I want to let our listeners know, um, I, I did get to tour that the uh, the archives that uh, was the year before last, I think, and what that is is a, an area where fragments from historic um, 18th century homes, it could be 18th century, could be 19th century, are in um, preservation uh, filing boxes, and these are documents by which fabrics or wallpapers may have been produced. And uh, and they're really, um, really ex- exciting to see because they're the real thing from, from you know, several hundred years ago uh, that, that was reproduced. It's a so it's, for it's us. A, yeah, it's really a, a, an incredible department and a very rare, um, a rare, uh, uh, you know, uh, asset for a company to have. And I think that, unfortunately, we're seeing, you know, especially those of us who do historic restoration, there is less and less available to us. And um, and Brunswick is one of the top sources right now for those of us that do uh, historic restoration. So um, uh, they, it's exciting that Kravit, that's part of the Kravit brand now. So it's, um, I, I'm yeah. delighted for you. Um, Jennifer, each week on the show, Marina sort of makes the case for what we call a normalization of of decorating. In other words, it used to be something that only a few rebels in society uh, did. Uh, And and we believe, and I think Marina believes especially, that over time, more and more people are going to find designers to help them uh, do their homes. So we sort of make the case um, each each week why a person might come to a, a decorator for the first time. And and now you're sort of a uh, uh, a, a partner in, in this process. Uh, and, and I wonder, from your perspective, let's say a person is considering buying a sofa from you know a furniture store that they see uh, on a television show or or something or see a commercial for. You know, what would you say to that person that would um, you know persuade them maybe that they should. Consider consider uh, going to a decorator and having custom furniture made? Well, I think that that's a great question, and I think that that's something that in our industry is a, is a major talking point because now customers are more educated than ever, and they feel, and when I say customers, I mean the end user, not designers. And designers really have to compete with they're not competing with other designers. They're competing against nobody. They're competing against the customer who thinks that they can do it themselves. And I think that's <laughs> right. one of the things that's happening now, the proliferation of design and, and the making it, making it look easy has been great because more and more people are exposed to it. But the reality of executing a project and understanding, understanding scale and, and a total, you know, bringing in someone to do your millwork and custom cabinets and, you know, the things that, the things that you can go and pick out a sofa or you can, you can do a color scheme, but there is something that designers bring to the table that is another level of expertise and experience that will make sure that your project and your home is really going to be perfect. And I think that what's happening now and this is just for me personally, I, I've, I've seen a lot of um, people my own age who are just getting to the point where they're ready to, ready to take their home seriously and, and make some big choices. And they want to, you know, they all have a Pinterest page and they all, you know, want their home to look like something that they see in House Beautiful or, you know, their, their dog-eared back issues of Domino Magazine. And <laughs> they, they get to a certain point on their own and then they say, okay, you got to tell me, you know, who I can call, who can help me. And I think um, the, the answer is, I'm not really sure what the answer is. I think, you know, we... I have a tremendous amount of respect for what designers do and, and what they bring to the table, more so now that I'm at Kravit and I really understand the, the depth of, of a design project. It's not just, you know, what, what my friend calls a picker. You know, we're going to have, we're going to pick this chair and we're going to pick this sofa. You know, designers now, and, and maybe that's what design was 50 years ago, but now what designers are bringing to the table, it's almost like you have an architect, a contractor, you know, a designer all rolled into one because they do have expertise, um, not just on, you know, furniture and fabrics, but they understand elevation and scale and, you know, all of those other materials that, that really make a project really layered and really 
really perfect. One thing I want to mention that um, I find, you know, as an example of that, one product that I, I and I just um, covered most of the, we did the Tuxedo Park Library, the public library there, and most, we ordered new and we had old furniture that we recovered, and we used one of your vinyls that looks just like leather. Um, yeah. a brown uh, a brown vinyl and people you know say vinyl you know they look at me like I'm crazy but I use it a lot I used it at the spot Glenmere also on the Recamiers or the chaise lounges with it look out to the spa garden and we did it because you know you would be coming out of your treatments you would have oils on and they're absolutely beautiful the vinyls the um, the tavern yeah. room at, at the at the Glenmere hotel is covered in vinyl uh, wall covering and um, and I use vinyl in bathrooms all the time especially with kids I'm doing a powder room now you know just this week out in Roslyn Long Island and we're using vinyl we're, we're just using it constantly and I think I don't think uh, the the average consumer has any idea how valuable a, a product it is and, uh, and I encourage our listeners to think very uh, very much about vinyl it's actually very reasonable and very durable and it looks amazing it really creates a great effect it can look like leather it can look like um, metal it can be metallic it's there's just a, some incredible value to vinyl and I um, I think that's a great way to use a designer, or, or a good example, anyway. When I um, uh, go into Marina's design salon, I'm, I'm struck by how many Kravit books she has, first of all. But we had a contest once to say, uh, you know, to guess how many fabrics were, were being offered in the, in, the, in the studio, and the answer was 26,000. So, um, I mean, I think a decorator helps a person sort through and, and really expand their, their conception of what their choices are. How many choices exist in the entire Kravit, Lee Jofa, Brunsfrig, and Feast line all together? How many different fabric choices are there? I cannot say for sure. I think that, you know, every time I turn around, there's a new book and there's a new collection. So the the number 64,000 is, is in my head wow. right now, but I'm, but I, I think that would be um, on the low end because I'm not sure if that includes Lee Joe Fine Brunswick. I think that puts into sharp focus the person going, you know, the, the, the furniture store that maybe a person could go into, a discount furniture store, for instance, who might offer a choice of five fabrics on a sofa. The, the, the choices that, that a decorator can offer a customer, a consumer, are, you know, just um, incredibly uh, broad and, and really the consumer is, is uh, really selling themselves short if they don't go in and see what's available. Tell us about Kravitz Smart, too. Um, that's sort of a neat idea. Sure. Kravitz Smart is a program that we introduced in 2009 when our furniture was really starting to take off. The program includes a great selection of furniture frames and fabrics, easy basics, and when you purchase the furniture, the Kravitz Smart fabric that you choose to upholster it is free. It's been a huge success for us because it offers savings and convenience to the customer, and there are a ton of great options. This fall, we're adding even more furniture frames and fabric to the program, so it's, it's always growing. It's been... Um, it's been a huge success for us. Yeah, and Kravit has terrific lines of furniture. I encourage you to check it out on their website. Uh, very simple, uh, easy to use, well-scaled, well-thought-out lines of furniture. They're really great. Um, I did use, uh, actually, their st uh, uh, stools, which are so well-shaped uh, in the treatment rooms at the spot, Glenmere. So um, I would encourage you to look at those. And, uh, and you have no furniture store customers for these? They're all available only through decorators, is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, in the, yeah, the great selection, the New York showroom. And I've been to many of your other showrooms, too, throughout the country. Um, you do a great job, really, with a strong presence, even down in, I think, in the furniture building itself. Um, so, and also wall coverings. And tell us about the green fabrics. That's really, um, uh, you've done a great job with those as well. Well, you know, we, we do have a line of green fabrics, and I think... Um, the idea of green fabrics is, is an interesting one because there are a lot of chemical processes that fabrics have to go through in order for them to be um, safe and durable and, you know, to not lose color and to not change shape. So I think that the for us, the bigger picture on a green choice for fabric would be what's going to last the longest, what's going to stay in the best shape. You know, we have... You know, if you covered your your sofa in a green, organic, unbleached linen, you might have to recover it in three years where, you know, 
then three years after that, then three years after that. Um, on the flip side of it, a fabric that, you know, a treated indoor-outdoor chenille that's going to repel stains, you know, it's not going to fade, it's not going to change shape, um, something that's going to, you know, stay on your sofa for, for 15, 20 years is um, it, there's, there's a trade-off there. So I think it's definitely important to educate yourself about what you're actually getting with green fabrics. There are a lot of um, bamboo fabrics, for example, that are the, the process of, of treating the bamboo in order to make it into fabric is, is actually a lot more harmful to the environment than a lot of cottons, um, just easy processes. That, um, that's something that I'm personally not really educated about, so I don't want to you know, speak out of turn, but um, one, of the, one of the ways that we are seeing a lot of more green choices is with our carpet. Um, we do offer a lot of bamboo silk options, artificial silk options for our carpet, which is a really cost-effective alternative to wool and 100% um, silk. And it it's offers a really great look, really comparable to silk, beautiful sheen. So um, that's, that's one area where, um, where we're seeing that. Yeah, you do also. have a great selection of carpet. And also, um, I'm, I, I really like your contract fabrics. And Jude's always asking me on the show, what, what's a contract fabric? Um, but we used it. Uh, contract fabrics are great for commercial applications, especially for hotels, spas. We work, we're working on the Warwick Community Center. Uh, anything where there's going to be high usage. And that's when those green fabrics also come in handy because they're very durable. And um, and you know so you you really want to have that high level of rubs or uh, indestructible fabric in um, commercial applications and we often need those so yeah we have we actually have a really a really robust commercial um, I'm sorry contract fabric program and you do it's seeing, terrific it's the, my the go-to separates, source <laughs> our, yeah the thing that separates our contract fabrics from our residential fabrics are um, those fabrics have to meet a variety of standards, whether it's um, durability, flame resistance, um, a lot of them are, are treated with something like a Stay Clean or a Nanotex, which offers stain resistance. A lot of them are antimicrobial. They can be cleaned really easily. Um, a lot of our vinyls have that Stay Clean. Like you said, you're in a spa, you sit down, right. you sit on a linen chair and you're covered with oil, you know, the chair is ruined, but if you sit down on something else, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, what's going to last a long time, what's going to look great for, for years and years to come, and, and uh, Jen, reason, sorry, we're running out of time, I'm getting fabrics. a, a oh, so okay. sorry, okay. I'm getting a sign from the engineer, <laughs> I, we are so delighted to have you here today, thank you so much for joining us, thank and you for uh, we're delighted Listen, to could, share could, with Kravitz, I could do this all day long, all right, <laughs> well, let's do it again, <laughs> okay, thank you so much, and uh, we appreciate your being on the show, and we'll talk to you soon, okay, Thank you. All Thank right. Bye-bye. So